Wolverhampton Wanderers traveling to Nottingham Forest this weekend after the international break. Hope you guys are keeping well and safe. It's Dave here again from Talking Wolves for today's match preview. What a massive game it is this weekend, guys. Wolves have got just 10 games left in the Premier League. And these are the games that Wolves need to be getting points out of to make sure they are a Premier League team going into next season. It's been a horrible season for Wolves. A really frustrating season. I've said it the last few match previews. The sooner we can be mathematically safe, the better. Because it's it's not good uh, for me at my young age as well. I'm not enjoying it at all. But yeah, let me know your thoughts ahead of this uh, preview today, guys. Be sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, of course, we'll have the forest perspective later on in the video. Um, but, yeah, the last game for Wolves, I'm sure we've all forgotten it now, is that defeat against the Leeds. A really frustrating game, which I felt Wolves should have done better in. We created enough chances to get something out of the game. Uh, but our own errors, obviously refereeing decisions, which you can also question, uh, letting Wolves down. But this game is huge. You know, we've had the, the sort of aftermath of the game. We've had all the banter with, with the Leeds fans. We've had all the, you know, the... the, the moaning about referees but this Saturday Wolves just need to focus on themselves and their own game and if these players are as good as we think they are points a point minimum should be achievable for Wolves um we've got to ignore the Carabao Cup game against Forest that's probably what they're going into this game thinking about knowing they've got the slight edge on us but if we can go into this game almost forgetting that match even happened this will be perfect for Wolves just to play their own game. Let the football do the talking um, and, and it will be okay for Wolves. We look at, obviously, the team news. Johnny is suspended. He got his red card um, after the Leeds game. You look at the replays and it, it was a definite red, wasn't it? Uh, Mateus Nunes, who was also sent off towards the end of that game in that sort of um, almost mini brawl in the, in the dugout, his red card has been rescinded for a uh, very poor um, refereeing decision. Uh, the linesman saying he pushed him when he, he obviously didn't. Wolves had had a fine for that though, but obviously we were fined. But the red card got rescinded, so not too sure why that was the why that was the case. Uh, in terms of fitness and so on, I'm sure Lopetegui will keep us updated with that in the press conference. Uh, Huang was out injured. Um, he had a little setback. Bubakar Traore could be a little bit closer. He could be part of the match day squad as well. Hugo Bueno has been seen back in training as well. Whether this game is a little bit soon for him, we'll wait and see as well. Ruben Evers is still available. He's been sort of on a tightrope, hasn't he, for the last few weeks, being on a booking, uh, one game away, one booking away from suspension. Uh, the Leeds and Forest games were two games that we really wanted him available for, and he's still available uh, for those games. I think he has to get through this one uh, and possibly even the Chelsea game to avoid uh, that two-game ban. Um, oh, it, might, it might even be a few more games than that, but yeah, um, he will be a massive loss if we do lose him before then. Um, my predicted lineup, guys, it's such a difficult one uh, really to, to, to look at. Lopetegui needs to change things, but what he changes and how he changes it, I'm not sure. Obviously, being away from home, you have to be a little bit more cautious, but I do think Forest defensively are quite poor. Um, so you look at uh, Joe Cesar obviously starting in goal. I think Samedo will obviously keep his place at right back. Probably keep Kilman and Dawson in there at centre back. With for me, Ait Nori coming back in. Um, made his debut for Algeria over the international break. Um, midfield and attack is a, a really interesting one. I'd possibly go with the 4 3 3. I think Nunez, let's reintroduce him alongside Neves and Lamina. Uh, Nunez had a couple of games out on the bench, so need you know, hopefully he's reset in his mind and he can put in performances that we've not seen from him as of yet. I think Cunha to come back in, uh, been a pivotal part of it. Obviously, I think he'll be up for this one to try and prove Forrest wrong after his antics during the Carabao Cup game. Um, with Sarabia, Ifit, and possibly Neto, but maybe even Jimenez. I'm going to put Cunha, Jimenez, and Sarabia, but I wouldn't even be against like a 4 2 3 1, maybe bringing a Dharma in to start as well. There's so many options uh, if these players are fit for Lopetegui to go for. Um, and it is just a really nervy game, isn't it? Like, I will have uh, breathe a huge sigh of relief. 
if Wolves manage to get three points out of this game because I'm actually worried for it. I, I used to love the times, not so much now, uh, not so much in recent seasons, but the, the season we came up, the first season in the Premier League. I'll go into every game feeling confident because I knew Wolves would just give it a go. At the moment... And it's not necessarily just Lopetegui's fault. I think under Bruno Large as well. I'll just go into the game and just not know what Wolves to expect. And I feel that's going to be the same way now. So we'll have to wait and see. But we need to... Forrest are a good side at home. You know, they're not very good away. Very good side at home. Atmosphere for them. They're going to be up for it. But I'm really, really hoping Wolves can do the business. I had a ticket, but unfortunately can't go due to work. So I'll be cheering on from Wolverhampton. Uh, but yeah, fingers crossed we can get the three points. Uh, before we move on to the opposition preview, once again, there is a BetMate game for you guys to get involved in and join. Of course, uh, we didn't have one last weekend with it being the internationals. This weekend, the Forest Wolves game is in there Saturday, 3 p.m. pot. Um, you can get involved with uh, joining in the, with a link in the description. Um, Obviously, you select players from the 3 p.m. kickoffs, and this is my team here. I've gone with Jose Siren Goal, backing him to get a clean sheet. Uh, Estupinian from uh, Brighton in there oh, alongside Mitoma. Anthony Robinson with Neves as well, and Bokayo Saka and Martinelli as my two forwards. So be sure to get involved in that. We'll discuss the results uh, on next week's podcast. Um, you've got to be 18 plus UK residents only, and please do gamble away. So I had a quick chat with Adam from the Red Side of the Trent podcast to get his thoughts on Forest season so far uh, and Steve Collins and of course some of the signings they've brought in and obviously Morgan Gibbs White as well. So Adam thank you very much for joining me mate how are you keeping? I'm, I'm doing well Dave it's a squeaky bum time now with 11 games to go isn't it how are you doing at your end? Yeah all good thank you mate it's only 10 for us 11 for you so you've got a, a tiny bit more breathing space but yeah nervy uh, especially before the international break Wolves lost out to Leeds in a disastrous game more refereeing <laughs> um issues for walls uh forest seems to have slowed down just a little bit mate they've, 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 they've obviously they were ahead of us for a little while they dropped below us now but only by one point and you, like i said you got the game in hand but for you as a forest fan first year back in the prem for a long long time how, how are you finding it how are the fans finding it so far i believe it's been it's a roller coaster obviously yeah. it's always going to be the case and i think at the start of the season, fans would have definitely snapped your hand off to be in the position we're in because mm -hmm. after Leicester City earlier in the season, everyone expected Cooper to get sacked and then expected the whole doom and gloom of when are we going to get our next win. Then we went on a bit of a an unbeaten streak because we went back to basics trying to be kind of solid. And now we're at a position where it looks like we could go down again and everyone's panicking. But I'm quite glad there's like eight other teams in the same situation because at least you've got quite a lot of chance to stay off. I mean, if if someone said you'll be within the fight and you'll be there's still a chance of you staying up with eleven games to go, I'd, I'd have taken that. But I think some people need to just like have a bit of perspective and 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 have a re, re just have a bit of a relax, reflect, uh, and yeah. it'll all be okay. <laughs> okay, I think. I think. I think they are three worse teams than ourselves, but. I, I can see it going down to the last game of the season and, and like fingernails and being bitten off and all that sort of jazz. Yeah, it's going to be... I'm, I'm really hoping Wolves can try and get a few wins before then. We got Arsenal on the last game of the season. I think if they have the title and us trying to stay up on the last game of the season, I don't think I'd be able to cope, to be honest. But <laughs> it's... Um, yeah, I mean, anyone from 12th down, I mean, even Palace now over the last few weeks have been dragged into it. They're level on points with us. Um, four points between 12th and 20th at this stage of the season is is absolutely ridiculous. You mentioned Steve Cooper there. I, I, I can probably pull up a tweet that I made when he, he joined you guys, and I thought it was a fantastic appointment at the time, obviously towards the bottom of the championship, um, and, he, and he got you promoted. Um, and like you said, he almost got, got the sack, but the, the club showed... A remarkable, you know, faith in him to give him a new contract. What again? What's the sort of the verdict of the, from the fans on Steve Cooper? Is there some sort of split between the fans, or is it pretty much everyone in you know supporting him as a as a manager right now? I think if you spoke to nine out of ten supporters, they'd say he's doing brilliant and, and yeah. they want him to stay. Even if we went down, people want him to stay because there was such a merry-go-round at the club in the last, I'd say, even 10 seasons, never mind the bit before, where we was going through two or more managers a season. And you can't, mm -hmm. the club can't progress at all with, with that happening. So I think people have seen the kind of thing of, he's been our most successful manager 
since um I can't even bloody get get me words out. Uh since uh, since Frank Clark. So yeah. he I think people are just craving that stability. So if we're going down, people want to keep him. But you do get, obviously, the odd one that is saying, like, no, he's tactically inept. Um, he's not <laughs> yeah. changing anything. He's not done anything. Well, at the start of the season, we tried to play how we did last season and got found out rather quickly. Now we've gone back to, we went back to this defensive style to try and accumulate points and be within the fight. And people still aren't happy. So you can't please everyone. Mm. For me, he's still a young coach. Like he's only like forty-four, which is still young. I know he doesn't look it. He looks about sixty-something because he's, he's not not been blessed, bless him. But um, <laughs> yeah, I think I think he's learning. He's learning on the job. I mean, you look at our situation. We signed thirty players. Yes, not yeah. not all thirty have actually played for the, for the club. But what manager is going to do any better unless they're all like superstars? You even look at Chelsea. Spent like what nearly a billion pounds on loads of players, and they they're still not the like the full thing are they really they're just mm-hmm. obviously more quality so it was always going to take time but i think majority of us you'd say are, be- are behind him regardless if we go down or if we stay up we want to keep him and, and let him progress and let him build something because the the owners obviously back him because it was like, look how many people we signed <laughs> yeah i was gonna say that the, the turnaround in players is phenomenal and it was almost you know as an outsider or a neutral like you just expected a different forest player or another forest player to sign every day of the transfer window at some point it was it was crazy the amount of players that they were bringing in and obviously it remains to be seen whether that's going to pay off or not but i think if you guys stay up um you know the the club have done the right thing there and like you said similar to the manager situation i think that will calm down over time you know a core of those players that you've signed this season will stay obviously next year one piece of business which i think is phenomenal is kaylor navas uh, you know and i'm sure <laughs> You know, Forest fans were saying, you know, this time last year when you were in the championship, if someone said you're going to have a quality, a goalkeeper of the quality of Kaylor Navas in your t- team for the second half of the season, you'd you'd be laughing. Even Dean Henderson was a was a great signing as well. What have you made of of the overall transfer business? Like you said, there have been some players that haven't even got a kick for you guys, but there's some signings like that which are just fantastic. Yeah, I think it was. I mean, a lot of people probably say it's like scattergun kind of approach and hope hope something sticks to the wall almost when yeah, you throw yeah. enough shit at it. Yeah. Um but um yeah I think some players have been have been really good and then some people I think have found it hard to adapt. I mean like Remo Freuler is one person where I wasn't really sure about him, never really knew about him from Atalanta, so obviously a captain, plays for Switzerland. Yeah. And he and it and he's recently had a bit of a dip in form but then for Switzerland over the international break, got two assists the other night. And people are going, where the hell is this player? So I think, but then like earlier in the season, he also found it hard to adapt from the game in Italy to the Premier League because it's just so much faster and more physical and 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 what have you. So, yeah, I think overall, I think it's been good. There's been some bad stuff. I mean, signing Chris Wood for 15 million is absolutely yeah. balmy for anyone, to, for me. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure how that's going to go down at the end of the season, like because I'd, I'd like us to go get someone a lot better than, than Chris Wood. But yeah, you can't you can't get it all right, can you? But I think overall, the players that I've seen on a regular have been good. They could be better, but I think a lot of them haven't even played in the Premier League before. So it's, it's going to be difficult, isn't it? Yeah. Obviously, one of the big ones is Morgan Gibbs. Right? Again, I think the Wolves fan base is pretty split on this one. We had a quick discussion before we started. Uh, and obviously, Wolves fans... Would love to get one over on Morgan Gibbs White, especially after the antics in the in the Carabao Cup, which I'm I'm sure we can move past quite quickly. But um, you know, he was a player. I think at the time, Wolves fans appreciated his quality, but for the overall package that Nottingham Forest were offering, was probably too good to turn down. Um, but he's had a good season from an outsider looking in. It looks like he's been pretty good for you guys, hasn't he? Yeah, I think Morgan's adapted again to the league because majority of his playing career has been in the championship and it on yeah. loan to like Swansea or Sheffield United last season. Yeah. Obviously was brilliant for them, but thankfully came up short in the playoff semi-final. <laughs> um, yeah, I think recently, I think he has found it a little bit tricky. I think he's, I don't think he's been playing 100% fit, to be honest. I think he's he's someone who wants to play every game, which is which is good. And I think we, we need to build a team around him because he's got obvious qualities. He's, his work rate's phenomenal. I just you, I think he himself would probably think he needs more output in terms of goals and assists. Mm-hmm. But that, I think that will come. He's, he, he is a good player. I think Wolves fans will probably think 
yeah, the price was too good, but probably think, well, we could have put, done a job in, in your own side, especially when you spent, what, 100 million on two players and neither of them are at the club anymore. Do you know what mm, I mean? So, yeah, it, yeah I think I think he's still adapting to the league and to the style. Like you say, sign so many players, it's going to be hard to like get a style and, and, and get used to each other so quick. But I think it will come because we have seen glimpses of it. So, yeah, I think there's a lot more to come from Morgan. Yeah, I think obviously still a very young player, very talented footballer. I, I I tipped him for the last two years to get an England cap. I don't think that's too far away. He probably needs a little bit more time, um, you know, in the Premier League with Forest. Uh, but I think that's probably not going to be too far away. I know he did quite well again for the twenty ones over the international break as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, looking for towards the rest of this uh, season, Adam. I mean, looking very quickly at Forest's fixtures next two. Walls at home, leads away, massive games. Um, you've got a couple of tricky games in there, but you've still got a handful of games against these teams towards the bottom. Palace, uh, Southampton, obviously Villa in the bottom half as well. Saw sort of 50 50 in terms of a split. Are you confident that Forest are going to be a Premier League side next season? I'm going to give you a long winded answer, obviously, because <laughs> I like to talk, as you know. Uh, the, I think the bookies gave us like the third hardest running of the of the rest of the season, but I think we've always got a chance. It's in our hands essentially. Mm-hmm. We're two points ahead with a game in hand on, on some teams. I think West Ham have got maybe we'll have one or two on us. I'm not sure now, but yeah. So yeah. I d- I do think it's it's definitely in our hands. We've got a we've got control of our own destiny. The only thing is is our away form is abysmal, um, to put it lightly. So we're relying a lot on our on our home form. I'm, we're going to have to cause a few upsets if that's what we're going to rely on. But I I'm a I'm a I'm a pessimistic kind of guy, optimistic, sort of say, not a pessimist. That's terrible to say. Um, so yeah, I'm confident. I think we'll stay up. I think even if it's by the skin of our teeth, I'm kind of hoping the last game against Palace is a bit like that Simpsons episode with. Mexico and Spain, where they're just passing it between them, <laughs> kind of like let out a nil nil or something, yeah. <laughs> and we just we both shake hands and go, yeah, we've stayed up. <laughs> but although I think Palace could be, I think they might be, I'm a, I think they might go down with Roy Hodgson going there. God. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know about the hot second hot or well, the third hardest run because I think, like you said, I, I think the Wolves fixtures are similar as well in regards to it being in our own hands whether we stay in the league. But obviously, you got ourselves, which. I think both sets of fans will feel is winnable, but probably going into the game very nervous about the match. Um, Leeds, I think, for you guys is winnable. Villa, although it is away, so it's going to be difficult. Then you've got United and Liverpool. You've got to play Arsenal and Chelsea and Brentford as well. Um, but the the game against Southampton is at home as well going into May. So I think you've got every chance. But you, you hate to rely on other results, but I think we're going to have to between now and obviously the end of the season. You're going to have to rely on results. And I just hope Wolves are not involved in the on the <laughs> final game of the season. It happened, when was it, 2011, I think it was for Wolves, 2010-2011. Uh, um, and we, we had to, you know, I think we stayed up on goal difference in the end. Um, so I think there was about five teams that could have gone down in two places. So I, I don't want to repeat of that anyway. Um, quickly, Adam, I know we've mentioned a couple of players already. Forest players that are in form that Wolves should be looking out for on Saturdays. Brennan Johnson, one of those. Yeah, got to be. I mean, I'm I'm quite thankful we played them against Newcastle, so we didn't play for Wales. And Rob Page threw a hissy fit in the media, which I, <laughs> yeah, Brennan Johnson definitely in in hot form. I think second half of the season since the World Cup, he's really like stepped up. He it's like he's matured over like a six month period to become a Premier League player because. A lot of fans, including myself, forget that he played League One two seasons ago. So, yeah, he's he's definitely the one to look out for him, him and Morgan for sure. I think, and then and then a return in Ryan Yates will be pivotal. I think for our running and and this battle on on Saturday because stopping Ruben Neves is is like priority number one for us. I think mm-hmm. he, he everything goes through him. He's he's a top midfielder in this league, and I think regardless of if you stay up or go down, he, I don't. I don't think he'll be there next no. season, personally. Yeah, it's going to be tricky. He's only got just over 12 months left on his deal as well. So it's a big, big summer for Ruben Nevers and his uh, future as well. Uh, Brennan Johnson as well, the amount of goals and, well, his goal contributions this season for a debut Premier League season has been very, very solid as well. And if I had to trouble you, Adam, for a score prediction, what, what do you think? I've said 2 1 on our pod. I think it will be a really horrible game to watch as a neutral. I think it will be. 
stop start because of the cup game really i think there'll be a few tackles yeah. flying in which i quite like do you know what i mean like in the premier league i've not really seen that so nah, it'd yeah. be quite nice to be part of like a semi rivalry not that i see wolves as a rival and you probably the I know same you mean, but, but, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But, but let someone kick someone it would be great won't it yeah, <laughs> yeah i think i think you're right though it's, it's quite rare that you see almost a rivalry I know we're not far away, but like teams with actions that have happened on the pitch create some sort of mini rivalry. So it'll be uh, interesting to see what happens. And obviously, Mateus Cunha and uh, Morgan Gibbs White going up against each other to see, you know, let's see if that that old celebration comes out again. I, between I think there'll be a few, few bet builders of yellow cards on Saturday. Yeah. You can see it, can't you? It's written yeah. in the stars. <laughs> yeah, no, Adam, as well, if people want to check out your podcast, where's the best place to, to find you guys? So, uh, Red Side of the Trend on Twitter and uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts and wherever else you listen to your usual podcasts. Um, we, had a, we had a Wolves fan on this week, so check that out. I'm sure it'll be an interesting listen to some. Yeah, no problem, Adam. Thanks a lot. And uh, yeah, apart from Saturday, all the best for the rest of the season. You too, Dave. Thank you. Cheers, mate. So big thanks to Adam. You can check out their podcast in the description down below. He said 2-1. I'd love to see a 2-1 for Wolves, if I'm completely honest. It is a really, really tough game to decide. We just need Wolves, like I said, focus on the football. And I think we will be absolutely fine. But it's going to be a very, very tricky game. Uh, very intense game, could be a very dirty game, but if Wolves keep their heads, three points is definitely in our hands. And that game, that, you know, beating another rival, you know, will gain three points, gain a lot of breathing space on Forest as well. Um, yeah, fingers crossed we could do the business. As always, guys, let me know your thoughts ahead of this game. Be sure to hit the like button down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And until next time, I'll see you all very, very soon.